Hi, everybody. Welcome to our second Lunch and Learn. We have a full house today. Wow, 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 wow. It's really picking up. Welcome, everybody. And you were so, bonjour tout le monde, à notre deuxième dîner conférence. And as the previous presentations, conferences that we've had, these sessions are being taped so that we can view it later. It'll be archived on our platform. We're going to hold off for all questions at the end. So if you have questions, and we'll have a lot of questions, we'll hold off till the end so that we have the microphone going so it'll be clearer to hear our questions afterwards. Okay? Alors, les questions seront prises par après. Pour nos collègues du territoire, this, tele this uh, conference is being telecast live. So if you have questions, you can send it in as well. And based on the feedback that we received, we have been putting forward these, car these lunch and learns. So I hope you're really enjoying them and really learning new habits and the resources that, that we're providing you. So then is here and she reminded me that today, actually March is National Nutrition Month, and today in specific is Dietitian Day. So with that, let's give a big round of applause <laughs> and show our appreciation to dietitians. Thank With you. that, we'll turn it over to Celine and let's start today's presentation on eating well at home and out. Thank you. And bon appétit tout le monde. So we started with talking about the basics of healthy eating. Then we spoke about uh, food labeling and how to do the grocery shopping. Today it's going to be more on meal planning and eating out. So the first part of the presentation will focus on healthy breakfast ideas, the lunchbox, menu planning websites, and then the second part will be how to make wiser food choices when we're eating out and at restaurants. So, get stocked. If I'm having a well-equipped pantry, a well-equipped fridge, I will more likely do more nutritious, healthy meals than if I don't have anything at home. So, my first question, if I, what are my must-have in the pantry? If I, if I need to stock up my pantry, what are the really five essential items that I need to have in my pantry? Pantry. Nuts. Every, every dish needs a cereal product with it. So what would be, what would be? Quinoa, rice, pasta, what else? Something that I would buy and can I can store and they have a long shelf life. <laughs> canned beans, uh, canned products, canned tuna, ideally low in salt. So basically, those canned foods such as beans, tuna, or fish and water, tomato paste, sauce, all of these, I can buy them, especially when they're on sale, low in sodium, put them in my pantry, and they really have a long shelf life. Brown rice, pasta, these are the stables for every dish. Uh, quinoa, bulgur, couscous, which I can make every week or once, uh, once every two weeks if I don't have the habit of eating them. Olive oil, canola oil, which are the best two oils you can have at home because there are excellent sources of monounsaturated fat, which are known to be really heart healthy. And then vinegar, it could be balsamic vinegar, any type of vinegar, mix, mix them with the oil, you'll have a very good vinaigrette. Cereal. I can have a cereal high in fiber and I can have a regular cereal and mix both of them together if I really don't want to have the high fiber all the time and I want to have a bit more sugar in my milk or in my yogurt. And unsalted nuts, they make excellent snack and they have a really long shelf life. Some bonus items, spices, fr fresh garlic, herbs, uh, broth, chicken broth uh, or any low sodium broth to really spice up your food and put a lot of flavor without adding extra salt or extra fat. Now, what are the must-have in my fridge? These are eggs, cheese, fruits and vegetables, yeah. Dairy product, why? What's the good part about the dairy product? Calcium and? up to 16 essential nutrients. They are really loaded with a lot of good nutrients. They are excellent source of calcium, of protein, and all of these are really good for the health. So they make excellent snacks. They make a very good addition to any meal. Pre-cut fresh vegetables and fruit. And why I'm saying pre-cut, ideally pre-cut? Because when I have them already pre-cut in my fridge, I will have more the tendency to grab them and eat them and take them with me. So it's, it's way easier on me. Like 
I know from myself, whenever I have people over and I get this nice vegetable pre-cut plate and I still have leftovers and I put them in my Ziploc, I know this week I'm eating a lot more vegetables than previously because I, I have them already like in front of me. I just have to grab them and take them with me. Um, and also good ideas would be to have those lettuce or baby spinach back that are already done. So you just need to wash them quickly, toss some protein with it and other vegetables and you have a very good salad. Eggs. Every time I get home, I don't know, I have no clue what to do. What's my first option? Eggs, either boiled or omelet or frittata, just toss them in any vegetables with them. They, are, they make an excellent meal and they are really satiating. So they, they're, they're, they're really fulfilling. And finally, any hummus or bean dip. Why? Because it's high in fiber, it's high in protein. So both, those two are excellent combination for long-term satiety. So let's say you also, you, you, you're, it's the afternoon, you have this, this hunger. Having some veggies with some bean dip or hummus dip will give you this, this satiety that you need. Or even if you get home and you're feeling hungry and you have this time to cook your meals and instead of grabbing anything, it would be a good idea to take one tablespoon of hummus with some veggies and have them. Now frozen food to fall back on. The good thing about frozen, freezing food is that I can get my meat, I can get anything I want, put them in the freezer and for, forget about them and then whenever I need them, take them out. So my number one would be to have chicken or lean meat individual portions. So let's say you're two at home, you're four, I don't know, depending on how much you are and you know that whenever you're cooking, you need, let's say, deux poitrines de poulet or I don't know, half a kilogram. So store them in individual portions and then whenever you need them, you take them out. More, more so, let's say uh, when you're buying your chicken and you want to have some, you, know, you want to put some flavor, pre-cut them, marinate them and freeze them and then whenever you get home later on, a week later, two weeks later, a month later, you're hungry, you don't know what to eat, you just grab this back, you defrost it, add some vegetable to it, you already have a, a prepared meal. Or for those of you who are really having a very busy lifestyle, get some already frozen grilled chicken, like really grilled chicken, They're, you would find them anywhere. Put them in the freezer and these you can use them later on to toss them to your salads or soups or any type of meal whenever you need that extra protein. Fish fillets, why? tilapia, salt, salmon, any type of fish fillet. They're the, so easy to cook and so, so quick to prepare. Just get some fish spices, put some olive oil in the oven, boom, it's done. You want more flavor, have some mustard on them, some dill weed in the oven, it's done. F your meal is ready in like 10 minutes. Fruits, whenever you're seeing, like you wanna have some berries, you wanna have some uh, mangoes, any fruits that are not in season, get them frozen. As I mentioned previous time, frozen fruit are as nutritious and even sometimes more nutritious than fresh fruit because the, the nutrients are locked in inside those fresh fruits. So have them in your freezer and then make some smoothies, uh, put them to your yogurt, to your cereal. So they're, they're really good options to have in your freezer. Same thing for vegetables. Stock up on your favorite vegetables in the freezer. Add them to rice, pasta, stews, casseroles, chowder, or chili whenever you need them. And then finally, shellfish cooked or divined frozen raw. So those quickly, you, you can quickly defrost them and add them also to any meal that you want. So these are really essential items that you could have and prepare a meal in less than 15 minutes and then have your meal. Breakfast. Why breakfast is so important and why do we always say, please don't skip breakfast? What's so important about breakfast? Exactly, it's the first meal of the day after fasting for so many hours. So when you're waking up, your body needs to refuel. If I'm skipping breakfast, I'm not giving this fuel for my body. My metabolism will slow down. I'm gonna be more in a starvation mode and then 
eventually my body would want to compensate and I would, be, I would eat more calories during the day. And I would go on this cycle. And there's a lot of people who are skip breakfast that do have a lot of weight problems because they skip breakfast. And just by reintroducing breakfast into their diet mode, it regulates more their eating habits. So breakfast means break the fast, really break the fast. So refueling body, weight control, and increased nutrient intake because you're really kicking, kickstarting your day with essential nutrients. Now, what makes a good breakfast in terms of food? What, in terms of, like we spoke about the food groups, what are the food groups that would be good to have in our breakfast? Protein. Fiber. And where do, sorry? Yeah, car carbohydrate, protein, a protein source, and then fiber. Which type of carbohydrates? The slow, the slow burning, the slow burning type. So the slow burning carbs that will, such as oatmeal, bran cereal, whole wheat bagels, that will really take time to get into my system and won't give me the spike of sugar early in the morning. Fruits for more vitamins, minerals, and feel full fiber. And then, very important, any source of protein. Because let's say if I'm having oatmeal alone with some berries on it but I don't have anything else such as yogurt or, or milk or any protein with it. In an hour or so, I'm gonna be hungry. The protein, this is what will give me this long-term satiety to get through my morning time. So it will help you feel fuller, longer compared to carbohydrate and fat. So in order, in order to summarize and, and know that you're having a good breakfast, ideally, if you can combine three of the for food groups, it would be great. Now, let's say you're someone that, 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 that isn't much on breakfast and you just start your day with, I don't know, a peanut butter with a toast. You can complement that with a snack, early, early snack in the morning. So that's, that's the whole purpose of the snack, to keep your sugar level constant and for increased nutrient intake. Ideas of breakfast on the go, dressed up yogurt. To get some Greek yogurt, add to it some cereal, some fruits, and you have a breakfast. Some French toast, you can use whole grain to make several slices of French toast, freeze the rest, and then use them whenever you want. Whole grain pancakes, serve them with fresh or frozen berries. Smoothies, I love smoothies because you can prepare them in advance, put some yogurt or milk, a lot of fruits that you want, and then you can also add some flax seeds or any grains that you want, and you really have a full breakfast. And it's very easy and it's very quick to prepare. Tortilla wraps, cheese and English muffin, and the list goes on and on. Lunchtime. You're coming to work, you have your lunchbox. What are the items that you're putting in your lunchbox? Fruit, vegetables, protein, your main meal. And what else? Because you have a nine to five day. Snacks, exactly. So the healthy lunchbox would have beverages, not just one beverage, all types, all types of beverages. Uh, one beverage, it could be water, it could be milk, vegetables, fruit, one milk product, the main meal, and one or two snacks depending on our hunger level. For example, veggies with hummus dip, a chicken sandwich that will be wrapped in a whole wheat tortilla with some lettuce and mustard, a yogurt 2% fat for my snack, a bottle of water, banana and nuts for my second snack. Kids healthy lunchbox tips. We also we all struggle, struggle to, to make healthier choices for our kids. So tip number one, it's really important to get your kids involved. Whenever they are helping in preparing their own meals, they will, have, they will be more likely to eat whatever they have in their lunchbox. And give them the choice. Let's say, do you want a bagel or do you want a, do you want a toast? Would you like an almond butter or a peanut butter? So whenever you're empowering them, it's making them more conscious of whatever they have and they would more likely eat what they have in their lunchbox. Use colorful laps. Kids love colors. Use as a colorful apps, try different sandwich fillings. Don't make it boring, the same sandwich every day. 
uh, mixed with, uh, let's say, um, uh, tabbouleh mis mixed with feta cheese in a pita pocket or a veggie burger. Let them pick their own lunchbox because, again, they, will, they, they would enjoy, like, it's, it's their own. They're, it's like it's their property and they would enjoy having it. Consider insulated lunch bags with room for a small freezer pack that allows you to send food that must be kept cold. The freezer pack can last up to four hours. So let's say they don't have this option, whatever they are, to having a, a, a um, fridge, exactly. So having some space to put a freezer pack would be a good thing if you're giving them leftover, let's say, from last night's supper. Practical lunch ideas, again, same for breakfast. Ideally, making sure to have three of the food of the food groups. It could be a simple leftover, or it could be any type of sandwich wrapped with, uh, with vegetables in it. So tortilla wrap, with shredded cheese, chopped chicken, and cut vegetables. It could be an egg salad, whole wheat bagel, and food. It could be just a plain salad with uh, some, uh, some toast and protein with it. It could be eight ounce low fat yogurt, whole wheat crackers, and fruit. So any type of meal that will provide you sufficient protein, more than 15 grams of protein per meal, that will provide you a good amount of fiber and tons of vitamins and minerals. Now, I wanted to introduce you to certain websites that are really uh, helpful resources. Starting with the website of My Health Checkup, because you would find a lot of diet plans uh, on the website and a lot of ideas uh, and tips in terms of uh, how to stock your pantry, your pantry, your freezer, and so forth. There's another website called SOS Cuisine. It's free of charge. All of them are free of charge, actually. You receive healthy menus, recipes, automated edible grocery lists, as well as tips on how to save time and energy. And they have a lot of tips on how to make your grocery uh, shopping on a, on a good budget. There's also my menu planner from Eat Right Ontario. You get your personalized menu plan, you tailor it as you want, and I'm gonna show you a picture here. This is an example. It's, it's giving you a really full schedule for an entire week, and whenever you click, let's say this is Sunday, French toast and canned peaches, it will give you the recipe, the nutrition info, and, and so forth. So it's really a tailorized menu plan. So these are all resources that you could use. There's also a free online meal planner from Canadian Living where, where you plan your meals and recipes in advance for the whole family, create printable copies where you can put them on your fridge. So you would find a lot of a lot of good tools on these websites. And if you really need that extra push to plan your meals, these are really good resources. Another thing that I wanted to introduce you to is an app called Cookspiration, or in French, Cuisine Idée. So this is an app, what's the concept of it? It's created by Dietitian of Canada. You can find it on iPhone, iPad, Android, or simply log in to www.cookspiration.com. So let's say I'm gonna take my cell phone, and if I go into my app, I log in, and then it will show me nice pictures. Then, Wednesday afternoon, I have Super Soup, Fall Fair, Spotlight on Dairy, On The Go, Kids Choice, Comfort Food. So let's say I choose On The Go. It will give me different recipes of different food groups. Let's say almond coconut granola, cornmeal muffin, muffin, quick roasted red pepper dip. And then I click on the recipe, it will give me the ingredient, the instruction, and the nutrition info. So you have a lot of nice recipes out there. All of them are super healthy and very easy to make. So if you're, if you're short on ideas, it's a very good app to use. And then finally, as you'll let introduce, March is usually nutrition months. And every year we have a team. This year's theme is eating well from nine to five. So they are, we're focusing more on a good eating habits in the workplace. And if you go on nutritionmonths.ca, you'll also find a lot of excellent tips on how to deal with eating in the workplace. Let's say when you're having uh, birthdays, you're bringing cakeovers, the lunch meals and all that. They have really good tips and good resources on this website.
Now, eating out. Why I wanted to introduce this topic is because I wanted to point out that even if you're eating out, it is easy to make he healthy food choices. Even if you're going to junk food places, it's always, there's always a choice. So let's start. Let's say you're in a food court. The first important thing is to downsize it. Usually we're tempted by buying, like let's say you go to any food court and they will tell you if you get the trio, it would be let's say a dollar five cents more expensive than getting just the, 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 the regular meal. So you would be tempted and you get it. So you would have your dessert and your beverage with it. But by having that, you're adding a lot of extra fat, and it's the bad fat, and you're, ha you're adding a lot of extra calories. And sometimes the portions are really big. So if you're, really, if you're still tempted and you get it, have it, but don't have the entire portion. Either, either share it with someone or take some leftovers with you. Go for the grill. Everything that is like grilled, it will be less in fat, grilled meat, peltry fish, and veggies, rather than for the deep fried version or the crispy version or the uh, uh, marinated version. And take advantage of the healthy options. Many fast food restaurants nowadays are offering healthier choices. But keep in mind, even healthier choices, let's say McDonald's wrap, they're good. Like better options, let's say, from having a, a Big Mac or whatever. But they're, they're still high in sodium. Whenever you're eating out, and if you're someone that's eating out on a daily basis, you're probably getting a lot of sodium, a lot of salt in your diet, because most of the food that we're eating outside is really high in salt. So keep in mind, even healthier choices, such as those healthier wraps, would have more sodium in them. In a workplace cafeteria, you go in and you have a lot of food choices. The first thing you need to do is really survey the choice that you have before you make your choice. Ask the server for a healthy side dish, such as steamed rice or baked potato, instead of having the fries. Choose 100% fruits or vegetable juice and add a pudding or fruit-based dessert. So let's say you have a choice between getting a creme brulee dessert or a chocolate cake and a fruit-based dessert. I know sometimes you would be tempted by the creme brulee and go for it, but don't go for it on a daily basis if you're having it on a daily basis. So go. That's a good way also to get more fruits and, go, and get uh, more fiber in your diet by getting that sweet taste you're, you're, you're asking from a fruit-based dessert. Let's say uh, it could be a, a fruit salad or it could, it could be a frozen, uh, frozen strawberry yogurt. Any type of dessert that would have fruits and some sweet in it, but not as much sweet as I would get in any commercial uh, cake or whatever. Hang out at the salad bar. At the salad bar, you have tons of choices of vegetables. And usually, you have some eggs, you have some tuna, you have some chicken. So you can, you can easily make your own salad, and it could be a very healthy meal. Be mindful of mayonnaise-based and marinated salads, which may have plenty of added, ha uh, added fats. So sometimes in my salad bar, I have already I have my pre-cut vegetables. I have some uh, um, vinaigrette on the side, but I'll, I also have some salads that are already made. But most of these salads would be already, uh, would have a lot of fat in them. Like let's say you're, you're seeing, um, I don't know, a cabbage salad. Most likely this cabbage salad will have tons of fat uh, in it. So try either to have a small portion or make your own by using a healthier vinaigrette. Add the vending machine. Usually, we, we tend to go to the vending machine if we're hungry and we don't have much anything with us, like no snacks or whatever. And unfortunately, most of the choices that, that we find in the vending machines aren't necessarily the good ones. But fortunately, now they're making, especially in all the healthcare places, uh, they're trying to introduce healthier options and putting, I don't know if you notice it, some. Um, some lights, let's say red would be something to avoid, green, go for it, orange, in moderation. And they would put them in a certain eye range for you to, uh, let, let's say in your, in your direct eye range, for you to get attracted to those type of uh, foods. So if you're in a vending machine and you have choices of nuts, you have fruit, uh, fruit cups, you have some milk or vegetable juice, go for these choices instead of going for the chips or the, or the cookies because they will make you hungrier. 
They will give you extra calories and they will make you hungrier and you'll eat more. In a coffee shop, super important, watch out your drinks. You would be amazed at how much calories, sugar and fat, sometimes I could, we would find in some flavored coffee. And some of them would reach more than 500 calories per cup. Some of them 700, 800 calories. And you would drink it, in a, you would drink it and have no clue what you're having. So you could easily stock up on calories during the day by still eating healthy. Like you're eating three well-balanced meals, you're having your snacks, but you're gaining weight because of the beverages that you're having. So watch out those choices. Drink wisely and opt for regular or deca decaffeinated coffee, latte, or milk. When you are on the road, and I know most of you work, and most of the time you are on the road, and to avoid this, this hunger gap, having healthy snacks with you on the go could help a lot. So fresh fruit, cut up vegetables, again, ready to eat whole grain cereals, dried fruit, some um, uh, cheese sticks, especially when the weather is so okay to leave, uh, to leave uh, those type of foods in the car. On vacation, again, I know we're on vacation, I know we're supposed to have fun, and we, will, we are going to have fun, but it's moderation is key. So go for zero calorie beverages for the same idea that I mentioned before, because it's very easy to add calories at the end of the day and then at the end of the week because of those beverages. Go easy on the alcohol, because you can talk about between 150 to 450 calories, especially if the alcoholic drink would have some juice and and other items in it. And alcohol is, a, is an appetite stimulant, so you would want to eat more when you're drinking alcohol. Downsize your portions, because again, you're eating out and most likely the portions will be big. Ask for sauce, gravies, dressings to be served on the side, so that way you would control the amount that you're putting in your plates. Order fruits and veggies every chance you get. Let's say that the, the, ser the server asks you, would you like, uh, what would you like with your plate? And you have some choice of salad, go for the salad instead of going for the french fries. Favor fish platters because, yes, sometimes they will cook it with, uh, by adding some butter or some, uh, um, some fat with it, but still it will be a better option than having, let's say, a prime rib or, uh, um, or any type of high-fat meat. Again, I'm not saying do, the, do that on a daily basis while you're on vacation, but if you can, order as much fish as you can. One, you're loading yourself with a lot of omega-3s, and second, you're getting a lean meat with lean fat. Share your dessert. Most desserts that are out there are huge. The other day I was at, I uh, forgot the name, but I, we ordered a carrot cake, and the carrot cake was humongous. Like we, ha seriously, I had maybe, sh seven layers with the cream and all that. And it, if I would have eaten this all by myself, it would be maybe half of the calorie I can take the, of, of my calorie needs per day. And, and it's not just about the calories, it's about what's in that carrot cake in terms of ingredients. It's really the bad fat, the trans fat that will raise your bad cholesterol, lots of sugar, a lot of added sugar. So yes, if I feel like having this carrot cake, maybe I'll have it, but I'm going to share it with someone else. That way I cut down on the calories and on the fat. And avoid fast food outlet if possible. Eating out at restaurants. Now I'm going to go through different, different types of restaurants and show you what are better alternatives. Subs and sandwiches. Try the six inch instead of the foot long. And I got something with me to show you. Let's say I get a submarine 12 inch. This submarine 12 inch with a choice of beverage, soft drink, and the potato chips. The regular thing that I get usually when I'm having this type of meal. So this is the equivalent of 36 cubes of sugar, plus 17 teaspoon of fat, plus 12.5 sachet of sodium. This is what I'm getting from this meal. Now let's say if I get the six inch and I get a bottle of water instead of getting my, my uh, soft drink, I'm gonna reduce this amount to nine cubes of sugar, seven teaspoon of fat, and 5.5 sachet of sodium. So 
this is where you see the difference. And whenever you're, and so, yes, you would say maybe it's, it's not sufficient for me. Load it up with as much vegetables as you can. Have some salad with it. Drink water and then salad. The salad and the fiber will fill you up, will take some, so, some space in your stomach. Uh, choose lean meat, roast beef, chicken, or veggie instead of uh, high-fat meat such as meatball, bacon, or steak. Put some mustard instead of putting mayonnaise. Uh, whole grain bread instead of white bread to add, for, to add more for the fiber. Extra veggie topping instead of extra meat. Mexican style restaurant. Try the soft tacos instead of the crispy shells. The black beans instead of the refried beans. The veggie and bean burritos instead of the beef and cheese stuffed burritos. Nachos with salsa instead of nachos with cheese, sour cream, and refried beans. Because you would be amazed by how much you're having just with this entree. Fajitas instead of chimichangas, usually deep, which are usually deep fried. And then I have chicken instead of beef because, again, my chicken will give me less saturated fat and less fat in general than the beef. Asian style restaurant. And this is where, like, when we're, let's say we're going into fast food, uh, fast, uh, food courts, we have a lot of these. And usually it's mostly deep fried. Even the rice is, is, is not steamed rice. So go for the egg drop miso wonton soups instead of the fried egg rolls, spare ribs, or the tempura. The stir-fried, steamed, roasted, broiled entrees instead of the battered, deep-fried dishes. Everything that, that will be battered, that will be marinated, most likely will have a lot of fat in it. Steamed or, ba or baked tofu instead of crispy beef or other meats. Brown rice instead of fried rice. Because you always have the option. They exist, but it's up to you to choose them. Stir-fried veggies instead of crispy noodles. And stir-fry, yes, they would put some oil, but it's not, a low, it's not a lot. It's just a bit like to turn them on, but it's not like fried vegetables. Sushi, edamame, these are also good choices. And edamame, by the way, can make an excellent snack. It's high in protein, it's high in fiber, you're getting also some veggies. You can prepare them in advance, and then whenever you want them, reheat them just a tiny bit, and they make really excellent snack. Just have one cup, and it's, it's very good. Italian style restaurant. And this is where we go onto uh, the pasta, the sauce bechamel, the thin crust pizza, the pepperoni. So this is where we can really stock up on a lot of calories. So try the thin crust pizza, pizza instead of the pan or deep crust pizza. And I also got this to show you the difference between both of them. I can open it. Okay, pizza. Thin crust, two slices, which is basically one third of 12 inch, 12 inch pizza, will give me the equivalent of 75 grams of carbohydrate, which is 15 cubes of sugar, 35 grams of fat, which is 7 teaspoon of fat, and then seven sachets of sodium, so 1,700 milligrams of sodium per those two slices. If I just change my crust, I just keep the same toppings, the pepperoni and the cheese and all that, but I just change the crust, I'm cutting down on my carbohydrate, on my fat, and on my sodium. So I would have 13 instead of 15 cubes of sugar. I would have uh, less of a teaspoon of fat, and I would have uh, less sodium. So basically, just by making this simple change, you're really helping uh, uh, making healthier food choice. Spaghetti. I'm going to also show you something. So let's say I ordered a spaghetti bolognese with meat sauce, and I have the regular plates. Whatever I'm having in the restaurant is the equivalent of 110 grams of carbohydrate, which is 22 cubes of sugar, 4 grams of fat, and then I have 1,400 milligrams of sodium. If I change my plate and make it more a healthier plate, remember when I showed you in the first lecture, I put more veggies on my plate and I decrease a bit my portion size, I'm cutting down everything in half. So half the carbohydrate, half the fat, and half the sodium. When you're, instead of having cream sauce, try having tomato-based sauce. You would have also more, when you're having those tomato-based sauce, you're having a lot of antioxidants because they are rich in lycopene and they're really good. 
entree with side of veggies in instead of entree with side of pasta, because also you have the choice. They ask you, would you like some pasta or would you like some grilled vegetables? Whole wheat pasta, if possible, instead of white pasta. Not all, not all Italian restaurants offer that. And in terms of the cheese, half the cheese, extra veggies, not extra cheese and meat toppings, because we tend to do that also. Now, when in, in terms of keywords or what to look for, go for everything that it's baked, barbecued, broiled, charboiled, grilled, poached, steamed, stir fry. So whenever you're seeing those words on the menu, it's a good type of cooking. It's a healthier type of cooking. When you're seeing au gratin, battered, buttered, crispy, smoked, deep fried, thick sauce, prime, pickled, Alfredo, there is a lot of added fat and mostly saturated and trans fat within this type of cooking. So it's on the menu, it's written out there and you have the choice. Again, I'm up for, let's say you're someone that goes to the restaurant once a month and you feel like whenever you wanna to go to this restaurant, enjoy the meal that you're having, it's okay, go for it. But if you're eating at a restaurant very frequently and, and it's something really occasional and it's like more than twice a week, you have to be careful about the food choices because it's an investment you're doing on the long run. It's really an, an investment on your health. If you're not feeling it now, it might show up in five, 10 years or more. So that's why they say you are what you eat. And it's, I read, I'm a firm believer of that. You can ma really make big changes to your health and improve your health status by eating well. And before I finish, I also had something to show you in my booklet here. The choice of trio that I'm having, let's say I'm having my hamburger trio with regular soft drink. This is the equivalent of 195 grams of carbohydrate, 50 grams of fat, and 1,100 milligrams of sodium. If I just switch, switch to my diet soft drink, I'm cutting down to 90 grams of carbohydrate instead of 150. And if I make a healthier choice by taking water and salad instead of the fries and the vegetables, I'm down to a normal meal, which is 45 grams of carb, 25 grams of fat, and the same amount of sodium, uh, well, less, a bit less of sodium. But basically, again, as I'm saying, you have the option of making healthy choice. It's really up to you to make those choices. So that's basically it, if I'm not mistaken. Oh yeah, so my take home message, whether eating at home or out, keep in mind those four principles. Balance, having a balanced meal. Try to put as much as the food groups in your meals. Variety, fish, chicken, beans, uh, brown rice, pasta. So try to include as much as you can from the different food groups. Because what you get in an apple is different from what you get in a banana. Or what you're getting in, an, in a fish is different from what you're getting in a, in, a, in a chicken. So try to get as much as you can, as much, as much nutrients of, the can, of you can from the, all these food groups. Moderation and portion control. I'm up for eating anything and we have a lot of good food out there but it's really the amount and how much you're eating of it that's going to make a difference so have a dessert but have it in moderation uh, have your favorite meal but try to watch out your portion control all these will make a difference on the long run thank you and now we open the floor up for questions we have our first question there. We'll wait for the mic. In the list of items looking at baked versus something else, why is smoked bad? Very high in salt. Everything smoked, cured, will be really high in salt. Hold on. Well, let's wait. Yeah, for prime rib. Prime, prime ribs, mostly in terms of, it's really the fat content of, it's, it, it's, really, it's related to the fat content of the meat. Okay, just of the meat, not because prime, they do something. No, no, no. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah. 
you mentioned that a lot of the, this food is very high in sodium, but why does it, it doesn't taste salty? If I would put the same amount of salt myself, it would be awful, but I'm just curious to know why it doesn't taste that salty. This is why we call it hidden salt. When you're eating cheese, do you taste the salt in the cheese? Not, the, not, the, not certain white cheese, but let's say you're having some uh, yellow cheese. Would you taste the salt in the cheese? No. When you're eating bread, let's say a baguette, would you taste the salt in the bread? No. That's hidden salt. Okay. It's, it's a really um, a combination of different tastes combined together. We call it, it's, it's food chemistry. And this is what usually all the um, marketers of those products work on to make you eat that food and enjoy the taste that you're eating without really sensing that. Because if you're sensing that it's high in salt, maybe you wouldn't enjoy it that much. But it's, it's a combination of different nutrients together that makes that you don't really taste the salt as is. Any questions from the field in the back? Do we get questions from the field? No? OK. Any other questions? Well, if you think of your questions later on, let me know, and we'll loop it back with Celine. And next week, join us next yeah. week. So, oh, we have a question. Hold on, we have a question. Yeah. Sorry, just to know where all this information can be found on the uh, on the, the site. All the Celine's information. Those. Yeah. Yeah. These presentations are being sent to you via Sync, and we will have it shortly on the Livid platform. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And on that note, next week, join us for a pre and post exercise nutrition. Thank yeah. you, everybody.